Hello, Christ United Methodist Church friends and family. It's Pastor Jeremiah coming to you with this week's uh, devotional. Um, today, I take a brief uh, moment to have a chat with uh, those of you who may often watch these videos or find them helpful or meaningful for you. Um, this week, I find myself with limited time today because I am working in on my classwork this week as I am pursuing my uh, doctoral um, degree, a doctorate of ministry specifically. Um, and this week I'm in class and so I'm on a lunch break today and then back to Zoom meetings until seven o'clock tonight with some homework to do. It's an intensive week and that's why they call it uh, intensives. Um, and yet I want to make sure that I am finding ways to balance what I'm doing and continue to do the things that I'm committed to do in the church. And so finding that balance is hard. Um, making sure that I'm not letting my church responsibilities down as a pastor um, in a local and particular context, but also making sure that I recognize my time and find ways to make that work. My friends at Fountain Square are having a lunch and devotional today, um, and because of the weather, I'm not running out there to bless it and say a few words and then rush back, um, and also trying to honor the difficulty of my time today, which is something that I think we all struggle with, um, finding balance and finding out ways to say no uh, in our lives and, and or at least choosing alternative arrangements. Um, if you're somebody like myself, you're a problem solver, you like to get things done, and it's easier for you to just do things and, and force the issue, you may pack your schedule too fully, agree to do too much, and more often than not, uh, prohibit people from stepping up and doing things that they might not have done because you were doing it. There's a text I read not long ago about saying yes to saying no, um, finding that balance and figuring that out. And I haven't perfected this by any means. Any of you who are uh, watching this know that I have a hard time not engaging, not doing things or letting go of what may be my perceived control in situations. And so I work on it tirelessly and have a lot of accountabilities that tell me to guard my time and take time off and take vacations. And those things are hard for me to uh, compromise with, with my um, heavily loaded work ethic regarding getting things done and doing the best I can for my congregation, my community. And yet, if I don't do that, and make time. I'm not doing the best I can for my family or my congregation or my community. And so finding balance is tough. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this week, as I'm looking at my class, my classwork has been exceptionally difficult this week, which kind of brings me to my thought for today. Um, the, the class is titled Race and Particularity. Um, looking at our particular context, so uh, for example, I am in Oregon, Ohio, at Christ United Methodist Church. I'm a white middle class male um, who is a pastor, and so that's a very particular thing. It's about my ethnicity, my race, my my gender, my um, uh, socioeconomic location um, in the world, and each of these things informs my very understanding of the way the world works and how I ought to work, for example. Um, the idea of getting things done and taking control and, and having power and resolving the problems that exist in my world is a very powered place to be and oftentimes is well, fostered by my upbringing as a white middle class male um, who is educated. Uh, I'm a problem solver and yet oftentimes I engage in the church or in the community that we serve problems that I can't solve. And then I get frustrated because well, what's the solution? Why are we doing this? What's the mission? What's the purpose? What's the vision? And yet we wrestle with that fact, yet, but building the kingdom of heaven is a work that's never done. We may grasp it in inches and yet move miles away from it. We may feed those who are hungry, yet people who are hungry still exist. We may serve the poor, for example, and the poor will always be with us, as Jesus reminds us. We may work to fight homelessness, 
and yet there will still be homelessness. And so the things that we are called to do as Christ's way followers in building the kingdom, reaching out to the poor, the lost, the broken, the marginalized, the oppressed, the, the foreigner and the immigrant, the things that we are called to do to build the kingdom of heaven oftentimes seem so distant and so disconnected from reality that it's hard to even engage. What can I do if I can't do anything about it? As I'm thinking about my coursework and, and recognizing the difficulties that I have and we as individuals face within systems such as the church or our communities or in our global, more global situation or national situation, we are always trying to find solutions and, and create, pro, uh, create a remedy for the problems that exist in our society only to continue to find that our government fails us to, to find that our solutions oftentimes create new problems and sometimes it just feels like what's the point of engaging at all and so what would i say to that and this comes to be my reflection point on recognizing the differences that we each have and engaging difference which is something that we very seldom do regardless of your race your class your gender identity typically we hang out with people who are a lot like us and we struggle once we move out of those groups. And, and we oftentimes don't hear the story from the side of who may be considered other. We don't read those stories. We don't watch movies about those stories. We don't listen well when it comes to those other stories. And so this week I'm being challenged with listening to things from the other side. Listening to things that are hard and difficult for me to comprehend and even more difficult for me to relate to in a first person type of way, but learning to have ears for those that I don't understand or I don't identify with and then finding ways to, to work to improve my ability as a person to interact with, understand, care for, and still offer the gospel, the good news to those who are quote unquote different than I am. And, and the first step in that is recognizing there's a disconnect and a difficulty that the, that the effort of doing so is work. It's a work to understand different people with different perspectives. And that work doesn't have to be relegated to simply, although it's important that we do this, simply to issues that are very foreign to us. We oftentimes have to work to understand people in our own homes. <laughs> They're different. They, they see the world differently. There are different age demographics. For me, I'm a parent with teenagers, for example. We have different priorities, different problems, and sometimes all that we have is those differences. As much as we would like to think we're alike, we're just not. We don't see the problems the same way, don't interpret the input the same way. Emotionally, we're not at the same place, and so there's a lot of room for disagreement, frustration, and disconnect. And so learning to listen to the other side, learning to try to be compassionate, learning to challenge myself seems to be the theme of the week for this week of intensives. And so it's my invitation to you. Uh, who is it you don't understand or who is it that you most struggle with and who is it that you have the most frustration with? And ask yourself, am I truly listening? Am I trying to understand or am I trying to get them to see things from my perspective? And that's oftentimes very unfruitful, um, trying to force your understanding and worldview into somebody else's um, never really changes much at all, except perhaps their opinion about you. And even if they agree, they're going to walk away unchanged. It's hard to listen. It's hard to sit with difference and it's hard to not expect that we try to find some sort of common ground to move forward when in reality that common ground could be accepting that we're different and aren't going to see the thing the same way. Every week at communion I talk about from this table behind me something I think is an important thought uh, regarding this uh, that the table is open to everyone. At God's table where we share bread and share cup that God has eliminated division. That God has eliminated race and class and gender um, and God has eliminated young and old, male or female, Jew or Gentile. And oftentimes, I also say, has even eliminated Democrat or Republican. This isn't to take away from our diversity. 
At the table, there are still those who are young and old. At the table, there are still those who are Democrat and Republican. At the table, there are still Gentiles and Jews. Those things don't dissolve. What it is is a matter of recognizing that these things that are definitely truthful about our identity and our individuality um, aren't necessarily the focal point at the table. Instead, what's focused on is our combined uniformity, which I hate that word, but it, it, as children of God, that first and foremost, uh, in our v vast differences and our vast identity um, individualities, um, that we are still at the root image bearers of the divine, that we are God's children, sons and daughters of the Most High. And of course, their table's different. Of course, the children are different. We talk different. We dress different. We live differently. We eat differently. We have different preferences, different understandings, even see God, the Father, in different ways. But that doesn't mean that we're still not image bearers of the divine. And so finding a way to wrestle with the tension that exists around a table and not seeing diversity and difference as division is the invitation each week we come to the table. That's hard work. And so my challenge to myself first, looking at the mirror hard myself here, is to continue to do that hard work. And then also my challenge is to you to engage that difficult work, to find places where you can begin to take steps towards working to challenge yourself um, in a, not eliminating, but embracing diversity and, and not eliminating difference, but saying difference is okay. And then how do I collaborate with that and see myself in those we may see as other and more importantly, recognize that divine image in those that cause us the most struggle as we contemplate the world we live in and find frustration in our news and in our, our incoming inboxes or um, on social media when we say things like, well, why don't they? You know, one of the trigger words, and I, even that word trigger is a trigger for some of you, myself included, um, but one of those words that's a a beacon to me is as soon as I hear people say the word they, or when I hear other, that language is divisive in and of itself. It creates division. And so who are the they and, and why are they they and not us? <laughs> it's difficult work. Um, my, that's my invitation. And I think that's the Jesus call. That's the invitation to be kingdom builders is, is that we are not eliminating difference, but instead we are finding harmony with difference and then working towards a larger, more macro vision of God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven, which is at the heart of that Lord's Prayer. I hope that these words have been challenging. I hope that they are words that you don't dismiss quickly, but instead wrestle with and then just take small steps. It doesn't have to be that you go out and challenge your most deeply held difficult beliefs or that you challenge that. Maybe it's just a small step, getting to understand perhaps your neighbor better, somebody in your community that you struggle with better, or just listening to the other side of an issue with a more open mind rather than uh, fixing in on clickbait or um, topical surface level ideas and arguments and instead saying, all right, what's, what's behind here? Just doing that next step worth of work and, and trying to see maybe perhaps validity in that stance or worldview rather than deciding us and them and we and they. Instead, trying to find some understanding of who we are as God's children. Um, it's something I wrestle with all the time, something that I am wrestling with more deeply this week. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to challenge myself um, and to invite others to challenge themselves as well. And so we close with prayer, and I will close today with the Lord's Prayer with a focus on the one, well, a couple of pieces of that prayer. One is, is note that we start with the word our, our Father, not mine, ours. Yet also, it's not about my will, but God's will being done on earth as it is in heaven. And of course, if the earth is not heaven, then there's work to be done, and we who are those who call God Father are called to be the ones to work towards heaven on earth, which is a lifelong journey. Let's pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You know, as I'm thinking and closing these thoughts, remember also that we are wholly dependent on God for all that we have. Um, it's not you that have done any of it. God's gifts within you have helped you accomplish whatever success or um, just overall collective um, power that you may or may not have in your life. God has given you those gifts of finances, wealth, status, uh, good jobs, cars, whatever it is that you may have, God has granted that to you. And that we are also those who are called to forgive others uh, the way we want God to forgive us. There's a lot hidden in that Lord's Prayer that can be very difficult to struggle with in and of itself. So I invite you to think of these things and have a great week. We'll see you next week.